we are all going to have those days, those seasons sometimes where those feelings aren't as strong. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be something going on with me. It could be something going on with you. Uh, It could just be some of the life events that we talked about earlier. But we will have those moments where that connection doesn't feel as strong. That doesn't mean that that connection cannot be restored. Mm -hmm. What that does mean is that we have to work to restore it. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Marriage Matters. This is a podcast where we talk about marriage matters because marriage, marriage matters. matters. That's where we got the name from. You heard it. Uh, but if you're watching for the very first time, my name is Glenn Coleman, and I'm joined as always by my stunningly beautiful wife. Well, thank you, husband. Hi, guys. I'm Tanya Coleman. And uh, like I said, this is a this is Marriage Matters, a podcast where we talk about all things relationships, uh, primarily marriage, but other relationships to and sometimes other things whatever we feel like talking about right um our objective here is just to help that's it i like it to help help period you know and you know just to share with you maybe some things that we've experienced that may help (laughs) yes so uh how you been doing how's your week my week is good am i like up in front of you do i need to or something's happening okay is that better i guess no that's worse I don't know. I don't know what you were looking or seeing. Oh, okay. You said something is off. I just feel like I was looking I back at you. I said something's off? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. You did say that. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about today, how you could say things and then you don't even remember you that said, you said it. it. And like, then when I tell you you said it, you'd be like, I didn't say that. Just fell out. No, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how was your week? My week has been, um, it's been good. Um, I feel like I always say that, but it's been a busy week, hectic week, um, a lot going on. I think we Mm -hmm. say that all the time, but there is, uh, we're just in this transitional season. So we just keep, um, keep working through it. Keep working Mm -hmm. at it. Yeah, it was, it was a good week for me. Uh, you know, I got a lot going on at work. Um, Mm -hmm. got a couple of projects, one project that I will, I've been trying to, this has like been going on for like a year and a half, I think. And, Mm -hmm. I'm just ready for it end. So next week we go live with this thing. Awesome. You know, fingers crossed. We yeah. did a, a test in our staging site. So hopefully it all goes, goes well. Yeah. I will be so, praying for y'all. Uh, let's get into the topic. Now, how about let's that? talk about it. So today we are talking about how to fall in love again. Okay. So, and specifically, we're talking about how to fall in love again with your spouse. Okay. You know, um, a lot of couples, or I won't, I'll say a lot of couples, I've heard it, you know, that we just fell out of love mm-hmm. or I just don't love him or her anymore. And so there's this idea of that we fall in love. And sometimes we fall out of love. Mm -hmm. And so today we're going to talk about in your marriage, how do you fall in love again with your spouse? And so Mm -hmm. to do that, we're going to kind of lay a little foundation, give you a little background knowledge um, and define what it means to fall in love and what it means to fall out of love. I want to say this and this may be getting ahead. I'm going to let you know. I know you jumping ahead. ahead. I already felt it. I was like, I just, I just, something just came to me is that maybe I think what happens a lot of times and, and you, I know you know this in counseling is that sometimes people just don't have the language Mm -hmm. to express what they're feeling or experiencing at the time. So they'll say something like, I'm falling out of love. Right. Mm -hmm. What you really probably are asking or what's probably really having What's probably happening is Mm -hmm. something has changed. Yes. Yes. Which is inevitable because we should all be growing and changing. And so you're saying I've I've fallen out of love, but, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, but it's not, maybe it is not that you've fallen out of love, Mm -hmm. but something that's changed, something's not the same as it was. Mm -hmm. And so just framing it, I think differently that way Mm -hmm. 
it's time, it, it, it's like okay, if we can identify what's changed, mm-hmm. and either if it's changed, we need to bring it back to where it was, mm-hmm. or maybe we both need to do some adjusting. Or mm-hmm. my point is, you can figure some things out. But when you just say I've fallen out of love, that's kind of like, but oh, dang, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what? What mm-hmm. you know? I'm gonna pull you back. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to share that. Um, so maybe just keep that in mind as we're yeah. talking through this. Maybe if if you're thinking that in your relationship, uh, falling out of love, maybe what you're really trying to say is something has changed, mm-hmm. and I'm not familiar with this, or it's it's not like it used to be. So, right. I just wanted to say that, and you can go That's ahead. Good. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, you're fine. I, I'm glad that you interrupted me. We're going to just pull it back a little bit because we're going to get there. Let's get there. Let's get there. Okay. Pull it back. Back that thing up. (laughs) What does it mean to fall in love? And so I actually, I like looking up words. You know Mm -hmm. this about me. And this is not a word. It's a statement. But um, what I found that when people say that they've fallen out of love or falling in love, sorry. When people say that I've fallen in love, it's the development of strong feelings of attachment and love usually towards another person. So, you know, like in culture today, we say, oh, I love that restaurant. Oh, I love your shirt. Oh, I love this or I love that. So we love a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So we use that word, like overuse that word. But when it comes to falling in Mm -hmm. love, it means that we have a development of strong feelings Mm -hmm. and attachment for someone, for a person. Um, it's a bit meta- metaphorical um, because it's the falling, the physical act of falling, like it happens suddenly. So oftentimes in movies, you know, people suddenly fall in love. You know, there's the there's the the music and the staring in each other's eyes, and mm-hmm. in that moment they've fallen in love. Mm-hmm. You know, but. That's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're kind of, we're living in the real world here, right? Um, So the opposite of that is to fall out of love. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for people? Some would say that it means to no longer feel romantic love for someone or to no longer feel those strong feelings or attachment to that other Mm -hmm. person. Yeah, and I think you said something that really, that's really key in what we're talking about is the way we use the word love nowadays. Mm-hmm. And a lot mm-hmm. of times the word love is associated with newness and excitement. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, I love that shirt. Well, mm-hmm. maybe it's a new shirt. Maybe you've never seen the shirt before. Right. But we all, you know, it's like a couple months ago, you know, I went through my closet mm-hmm. and it, it's amazing how things that I was like, oh, this is tight. This is a tight, you know, mm-hmm. well, I don't know if they still use tight. That's tight was used to be the word, word that we use before we use love. Like, well, people, people still, but anyway, <laughs> my point is, is that my attachment and my feeling toward that right. thing mm-hmm. now is different. And so. I think because we use the word love like that for so many things mm-hmm. that that creeps into relationships. Mm-hmm. And we're going to discover today that that's not the case, that that's not what word. I mean, that's not what love. Love is not uh, it, it just uh, excitement. It can produce that, but that's not what it right. is. Right. Um, so it's like it's, it's not like it's like so it's like not like the clothes or the the car you know, it's like, uh, you know, I remember, you know, you get a brand new car and it's like, OK, you keep it clean. Lord, you, you, you do clean. all the things. But eventually it's like, it's it, you know, mm-hmm. you look it's at the, no longer new. Yeah. And so, so you don't treat it as well as you did. So you if know? we if we apply that principle to love, mm-hmm. then your your relationship is is always is it's doomed from the start, mm. because what you're saying is that. In, in the connotation in which a lot of people use the word love, what you're saying is eventually, because I, oh, I love my new car. Well, when it becomes old, then those feelings wear right. off. So now I got to go and get another one. Mm. Mm. Or I need another shirt. Or I have to change my wardrobe because now all of that stuff is not fashionable anymore. Right. So I don't love that. The shirt that I loved, you know, three years ago mm-hmm. that was in style and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever mm-hmm. is it, different now. So yeah. you, one of the things that we want to do in this podcast is maybe even change your concept 
Right. Of love. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So there are some misconceptions that, you know, that we have, people have um, about love or about marriage. So Mm -hmm. we're going to address some of those misconceptions and see if we can help some folks out to better understand or recognize when they may be thinking or feeling a certain way Mm -hmm. that is that lines up with that misconception Mm -hmm. and help them be able to cross over to the other side okay so the first one is that marriage will take care of itself Mm -hmm. it's like you always say you know it said it and forget it Mm -hmm. what do you think about that uh i think that that is a misconception Mm -hmm. um that you know a lot of people think that once you say I do, then it just autumn everything just kind of takes care of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but marriage mm-hmm. is 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 like any other thing that's worth a uh, value mm-hmm. is if, if you have if you're only gonna get out of it what you put into it, mm-hmm. if you, if if I can say mm-hmm. it that way. Mm-hmm. Um uh man, I, I got a quote the other day from a friend of mine. Um how did it say? It's like it was basically saying that the um, the the value of a decision is directly correlated to the effort in which is put into that decision to get the results or something like that. Mm-hmm. So my point is, it's like anything that's valuable somewhere, somebody had to put effort. Right into that right you know and we could even go back to uh you know the clothing thing so there's a reason why um and no shade but there's a reason why a purse at target it's nice but it costs 40 Mm dollars and a louis vuitton may start out on the low end at two grand Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a reason And yes, it has to do with name recognition, but it's also in the quality of the materials, Mm -hmm. how it was made. Mm -hmm. You know, that Target purse is going to last you maybe. It'll last you a couple of years. If if that, but that Louis Vuitton bag, Mm That, that could be passed down generation. You're crossing my fence messing with Target over here. No, I'm not messing know, with it. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, even I, 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 there's like Target, the, there's a brand of jeans that I love at Target. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's Goodfellow maybe. Mm-hmm. I love those jeans. But I know that... I get what you're saying. It's only going to last a couple, you know, a few you right. know, a few months. And then I'm going to go back and buy. Now, they only cost 20 bucks. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I'm saying is the value of a thing goes right. it's, it's, if it's the it's directly related to the amount of work and effort that goes into, into it. producing it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I said all I like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> all around the world. All to get around to that. the mulberry bush. Yeah. Yes. So you know, sometimes we feel like okay, I just have to find the perfect person. When I find that perfect person, you know, he's six foot two, and you know, he looks like this, or she looks like that. And, you know, they have a really great career They're You know, they love the Lord. So we find this perfect person and we marry this person and it's just going to be perfect, Mm -hmm. you know, um, without the effort that you just described. And we'll just be married happily ever after. And what people don't realize is that even two beautiful, perfect people for one another still have to work at their marriage. Yeah. And I know it's like, I think it's by design that it happens that way because chemistry is important. Right. Attraction is important mm-hmm. because that's usually the first thing mm-hmm. that draws us to a person mm-hmm. because we don't usually, we don't know it unless we grew up with that person. Mm-hmm. We don't know anything about that person. So the way a person looks, their body or their chemistry, their personality or whatever it is that attracts us Mm -hmm. to that person. The the goal of attraction and chemistry is to get you uh, to pay attention to each other long enough to develop something deeper. Yeah. Chemistry and attraction is never meant to... uh, to to sustain any relationship, right, right, and that's why you know in high school you know you go from person to person because right. it's all about chemistry and attraction, right. but it's never meant to right. sustain, right, you know, a long term relationship. Yeah, that's good. So um, that misconception that I know how to love my spouse, I know mm-hmm. you know 
I, I've heard, you know, people say this, maybe I'm telling my age, but I know how to please my man. Mm-hmm. I know how to please my woman. You yeah. know, uh, a lot of that is their own misconception of what that means to please this other person. Mm-hmm. They really haven't even investigated uh, what is pleasing or what are that that person's needs. And we talk about that all the time in here about the love languages and, and understanding your spouse's love language and, and their needs and all of those mm-hmm. different things. It's not based solely on you. Mm-hmm. You know, even if your intention is to um, meet their needs and to please them, if you don't talk to them about what those needs and those and what does please them, then how do you know? You're just mm-hmm. really making assumptions or you're basing it off of what's pleasing to you. Yeah. Yeah. And and it kind of along those same lines, you know, a lot of times we think, you know, the gender specific roles, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it's like a lot of times, you know, I hear men say something like, you know, woman, what do you want from me? I mean, I work hard, I provide and, and, but the question is, yeah, that's the question. What do you want from me? Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes we don't know. And we think that just because we do those things that right. are, that's it, that are culturally expected of a man, mm-hmm. then that automatically means our marriage is going to be perfect and right. it's going to thrive right. and it's going to flourish. Not it so. automatically means that you shouldn't have a complaint right. because I go to work every day right. and I make sure the bills are paid. But again, like Tanya just said that maybe, it, maybe that's not enough for your spouse. Right. Maybe for somebody's spouse that is, but maybe, you know, they want more. They want an emotional connection. They want, you know, not just someone to provide for them financially or physically. They want somebody to provide for them emotionally. Absolutely. So again, that's another misconception mm-hmm. that things will just take care of themselves. Things will work themselves out. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the times that doesn't work in life. No. It'll, it'll, it, things will just work themselves out. You know, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And call. I was talking to uh, another friend of mine who was a minister, and we were talking about a situation. I asked him, I said, can I use that, uh, that scripture? Can I use that scripture right <laughs> here? You know, because that's what we stick on everything. Right, right, all right, things right, work together. Right. Well, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're spending more than you make. Mm-hmm. Uh, that ain't going to work out together for your good, uh, even if you love the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyway, let me let me not. I'm going to go down that path. Right. You know, I, I may be talking to myself, right? You know, <laughs> and, and let me stop. Okay, so that's misconception number one that mm-hmm. things are just going to work out. That marriage is set it and forget it. Mm-hmm. It's not. Okay, go ahead. All right. So number two, misconception number two: emotions or feelings are the driving force to love. If your feelings change, then the relationship should end. So basically what were the misconception there is that based on my emotions, you know, based on my feelings, then that is how I determine if I am still in love with my spouse. Mm -hmm. And if my feelings about my spouse change, then maybe it's time to think about ending this relationship Mm -hmm. because my feelings are no longer the same. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? So, yeah, I think that, you know, and we talk a lot about emotions and learning how to deal and cope with and mm-hmm. process through emotions. So I'm not saying that emotions should be ignored, mm-hmm. but what we have to realize is that, like you said, that the emotions are not the driver of love, mm-hmm. that they're not the thing from which love comes or, or is produced from. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to say that emotions uh, are are indicators. Mm-hmm. So if if my emotions or my feelings for a person changes, um, the question I should be asking myself is what has changed? Right. Because something that the thing that was driving that emotion. So maybe it was you know the way you felt appreciated mm-hmm. in the relationship. Mm-hmm made you feel a certain way. Now you don't feel that anymore. That doesn't mean that you no longer love the person. That just means that what the thing that was causing that emotion to rise up or be produced or aroused or whatever you want to call it inside of you has changed. So when my emotions change, then that means that I need to ask myself what has changed because there's so many things that affect our emotions. And again, emotions are indicators and we should use those in life to help us identify You know, the life circumstances, you know, it could be hormones, Mm -hmm. it could be work. Right. There's a gamut of things. Feelings of being overwhelmed. All of that. There's a lot happening in the world today and it affects all of us differently. You know, depending on your past experiences, Mm -hmm. um, you may see 
or experience something that will change how you respond to your spouse emotionally or how you feel emotionally, period, which is going to affect the way that you feel emotionally about your spouse, you know? So all of those things we need to to check and we need to examine, um, which is why, again, we promote going to therapy um, because that is a place where you can work through all of those things, you know? So I, I like to think as like love... Love, oh, this is this is I just got this. Check this okay, out. Come so on, love, come on, come on. <laughs> love should be the the emotions are the wind for the sail mm-hmm. of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Love is the rudder. Mm-hmm. So love should be that thing that's constant. Right. And and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but love is always, it's not the emotion. Love is the choice. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and to quote uh the great Reverend Dr. Uh, Norman Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he always says that, you know, when 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 you're not sure what's going on or when things are going on or they're changing around you, go back to what you know. Right. What do you right. know? I right. know I love this person. Right. I have chosen to love this person. Mm-hmm. So I know that. So let me stick with that. I know I'm, I'm going to keep choosing to love, right. you know, and when you look at 1 Corinthians 13, mm-hmm. Everything that 1 Corinthians 13, and for those of you who don't know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Bible, it it gives a dissertation on love, Mm -hmm. right? And everything it talks about, it says love is patient. Mm -hmm. Well, patience is a choice. Mm -hmm. You have to, patience, you know this, Mm -hmm. patience just doesn't happen. No, it does not. If you've been in the the line at Walmart, (laughs) you know, I'm not going to tell that story. I I was going to just say something, but I'm not, I'm never mind. Okay, keep going. Uh, <laughs> it says love, love is kind. Mm-hmm. That you have to choose to be kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, love uh, always never seeks its own way or its own rights. Right. That's a choice. Mm-hmm. All of those things are a choice. And it's like it, today in, in today's climate, mm-hmm. with everything that's going on, you have to choose Ooh, to prefer other people. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think. People don't do that anymore. No. It's like, what's best for me? Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's some of that plays in the life, but I'm just saying in the grand, grand, right, grand right. scheme of things, mm-hmm. you know, it's like if it if it's if it's not what I want or what I need, then we shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't want to. I was That's going good. down there, but but I just want to say that mm-hmm. love is a choice. It is a choice, you know. And I was just sitting here thinking, you know, looking at First Corinthians 13, um, and that all of those those attributes in there are decision. We make a decision Mm -hmm. to, to be patient and love and kind and not, you know, um, repay a suffered wrong and all these different things. Um, I thought about Jesus, Mm. you know, because he was sent here on assignment, right? It was God's way of coming into the earth and, redeeming us back after the fall. Um, but when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he began to feel the, the stress and the overwhelm and the pressure and the anxiety of being put on the cross. And he began to, to sweat drops of blood. That was an indicator that dad, I changed my mind. I don't mm-hmm. know if I want to do this for these people. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be separated from you for any period of time But he got a word response back from the father. And he said, you know, not my will, but thy will. And so he, in that moment, he made a choice. He made a choice. To love us and go to the cross for us. It was a decision. Yes. And that's why, you know, God so loved the world. He loved. He made a choice to give. Mm -hmm. So that's um, the it's all about the the, cho- the choice and you know even when you fell in love mm-hmm. and you when you think back to that like i remember making a choice to I, like after work mm-hmm. i used to go hang out with my with my friends after mm-hmm. work you mm-hmm. know and i worked the night shift back then so it would be like 3 a.m. you know so we'd go hang out at waffle house or something mm-hmm. nothing you know but I made a choice, mm-hmm. as, well, especially after we got married. Right. I made a choice 
not to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Not because what we were doing was so bad or right. it was wrong, or but I made a choice that I wanted to spend that time mm-hmm. with you and no longer. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Love is a choice. That right. It's always a choice. It's not a feeling. If I feel a certain way, again, I need to go back to, okay, what changed? What's going on? Right. Why am I feeling this way? That's the, that's the question that we should ask. Mm-hmm. So when you're, when you, when you don't feel the emotions and are, when you don't, when you feel different or you feel a way, mm-hmm. that's not, that's not an indicator that you're falling out of love because right. you can't fall out of something that you're choosing to be in. Right. If you are no longer in love, what that means is you're choosing something different. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I see, you know, you kind of can tell, um, when someone is deliberately making a decision mm-hmm. and they're making a choice, you know, mm-hmm. so we have to, sometimes we, we use words to get around the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, which is why we created this, the space for us, you know, that we communicate openly and honestly about everything all the time. So if I'm not like, you're not like my favorite person in this moment because you're joking around too much and I'm trying to be serious, then I'm going to let you know. No, yeah. <laughs> No, because that's good. Because actually, we were getting ready for this podcast. See, I'm going to tell on you. We were getting ready for this podcast. And she gave me a look. I'm like, see, like right now, you don't like me, do you? Huh? But you're choosing to keep doing this. I choose you every day, And you're choosing to love me. You're making a choice to do this project, this this Marriage Matters podcast. Because it matters. Even though you want to maybe put hands on me Mm -hmm. and not in a loving, physical, (laughs) attraction kind of way. (laughs) Yes. But, you know, it's like we have to recognize even within ourselves when we are deliberately doing some things and we are trying to put that off. But let's move on. Misconception number three. three. Tres. Um, Love can't be restored. So oftentimes people think or they feel like, you know, those emotions aren't there. I don't feel as attached to this person. It's just over, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And that really is a misconception. We are all going to have those days, those seasons sometimes where those feelings aren't as strong. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be something going on with me. It could be something going on with you. Uh, It could just be some of the life events that we talked about earlier, but we will have those moments where that connection doesn't feel as strong. That doesn't mean that that connection cannot be restored. Mm -hmm. What that does mean is that we have to work to restore story. Yeah. And and let people and let your your spouse know that it's like, mm-hmm. hey, I just we need to I need some time with you. I just don't mm-hmm. feel connected. Mm-hmm. I don't feel, you know, or now I'm not saying to do this. This is the disclaimer. This this brother, he he in a whole different place in his relationship. Mm-hmm. But he told me well, he's like sometimes he said, I'll tell my wife when I feel attracted to another woman. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. What? He's like, well, it's like, you know, I, I want her to know that mm-hmm. she needed. So I'm not saying to do that. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying he was communicating something. Right. He's what like, was "Hey, going on? I yeah. feel this. So what's okay? What's what's going on?" Um, but yeah, you're you're right. You know, because love is a choice. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is start choosing mm-hmm. that choice again. Again. And I know that sounds simple. But it's it's the reality of it. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and, and I was just telling him, it's like, you know, man, just what you got to do is I said, you know, what what made you what made you fall in love? Mm-hmm. You know, and he started naming some things. OK, well, what you need to do is communicate those things mm-hmm. to your wife mm-hmm. and say, hey, these are the things that made me fall in love mm-hmm. with you, mm-hmm. but you don't do those things anymore. Right. Right. I would like not to say that because again, life happens, kids, mm-hmm. work, school, whatever, whatever. But I, I would just like to experience more of that mm-hmm. again in our relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think be, you know, because we're in different spaces at different times. You know, we talked about some of those things that happened earlier on, you know, that can happen. Um, say a hormonal issue. If a woman, your wife is having issues hormonally or what have you, you know, be very, not that you don't be honest, but be very intentional with your wording. And so when I say that, what I mean is don't put it off on her. Mm -hmm. We need to 
yeah. get back to this. Yeah, so we right. need right. to work on this because yeah. she's not married by herself or right. to herself. Right. So it's always um, a we kind of situation that needs to be addressed. Yeah. You know, because because here's the deal, and we say this a lot. You're going to change. Mm-hmm. Things are going to change. Life is going to change. Things are going to happen. So change. They say the only constant in life is change. It's change, yeah. You know, so that's going to happen. So yes, you're going to have to make some adjustments. You're going to have to maybe pull back on some things. You're going to have to make some choices to say, you know, I know that, you know, in, in the past I may have chose that, but right. now for the sake of our relationship, I'm going to choose this. And that's that's what love really is, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. That's what it is. It's saying, I know I can do that. It's not right. wrong for me. Just like I was saying with the, with the going eat out after work. Nothing wrong with that. Right, right, right. But I'm choosing another, I'm choosing her. I'm choosing that to spend that time with her. Not to say that maybe I can't ever do that. Maybe I, instead of doing it every night, I'll do it once a week. Mm-hmm. Or So it's all about making choices. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, with that being said, I just really, you know, for me, I always say this, you can't fall out of something you never fell into. Mm-hmm. So again, I don't believe in the concept of falling, mm-hmm. like love just, like there's a love hole that you just <laughs> fell into it. <laughs> You know, and even if that were true, if you fell into a hole, it's a lot harder to climb out of it Come on. than to than you right. than it was for you to fall right. in. Right. So it it should be easy to fall in, but it's hard to get to out. Get out of yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So, but uh, if you don't fall in love, then like I said, you can't. To me, you you can't fall out. It's, it's a choice. You're making right. a choice. Right. That's what you're doing. Right. And I know that's kind of, sometimes it's hard to admit that to yourself. But it is. You're making a choice. Mm-hmm. You're making a choice to keep that information to yourself mm-hmm. instead of sharing that with your spouse. That's good. You're making a choice not to work on the relationship. Mm-hmm. You're making a choice to take the easy way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just to encourage couples who may be struggling in some of these areas. Listen, guys, go back to, yes, Glenn said earlier, go back to what you know. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you need to go watch your wedding video mm-hmm. um, and listen to the vows that you exchanged at the altar. You know, remember this, like we we didn't create marriage and I'm not just talking about we as a Glenn and I, but like us humans, we did not create marriage. That was a, that's a God thing, yeah. you know, and he created it for success. He created it to be successful. It was never his intent that we would marry and that marriage would not work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I won't get into some other stuff. I was about to go there, but I'm not. Um, but he created like marriage <laughs> <laughs> to work. And so I say this, like, if you feel like you're not as connected with your spouse, Ask those questions Glenn brought up earlier. You know, what happened? You know, what's going on? You know, why am I feeling this way? Um, Think about the things that you all did before getting married, when you were dating and, and, you know, husband, you were pursuing her, you know, or, you know, whatever it is. Think about those things. Maybe we need to get back to doing some of those things. If you have um, said some things, done some things that you know Uh, You need to apologize for get over yourself and apologize, Mm -hmm. you know, do those things that need to be done. You know, the Bible says to repent, you know, repent to your spouse, repent to the Lord, repent to your spouse, Um, change the mindsets, change the attitudes, change the behaviors that are not working for you. They're not working for Mm -hmm. you. Um, Go get back to the beginning and. Remember that you can rekindle those those same feelings of connection and at some point really deeper feelings of connection, yeah, yeah. Um, deeper feelings of love and commitment, you know, and making decisions to be faithful to your spouse. You know, opportunity will pass you by every day. Every day you have an opportunity to to do something out of character, to say something out of character, to look too long all of that kind of stuff, but come back to what you know and make better decisions every day. Choose your spouse every day. I choose you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Same here. I choose you too. Mm -hmm. So, so here's the thing. Here's the challenge. I want to challenge you. Challenge. (laughs) uh, (laughs) Ask your spouse. 
Uh, why don't you guys do this together? Yeah. Write down the things that made you fall in love. I put mm-hmm. in there, of course, because you know what we just right, said. right, right. What are those things that made you that that got you to this point? Mm-hmm. The, the, and, and exchange that list with mm-hmm. each other, and then make it a point to to do those things once or twice, maybe three times a week. Mm-hmm. Put it put it actually in your phone. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's. Uh, um, bringing bringing flowers. Mm-hmm. Well, put a reminder on your calendar. On you know, when I leave work, I'm stop at Kroger and get. You know, it doesn't right, have to be nothing. Right. Sending you know a sweet text message. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm just whatever, thinking about. Yeah, you, you checked up on me. You don't do that anymore. Okay, I can do that. Mm-hmm. So I, that's just a challenge. I yeah, like I like that. that. Okay, I like it. So that's all we have for you today. Hopefully, you heard something. Uh, that uh, would inspire you uh, to just work on your relationship. Um, uh, remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, mm-hmm. Marriage Matter 0526. Uh, and uh, you can also find the podcast. If you're watching this, you can also find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, all, all digital media outlets, yes. pretty much. You can find the Marriage Matters Marriage Podcast. Matters. Um, anything else? No, I enjoyed this conversation, enjoyed this topic mm-hmm. because I think that it's something that we all can employ. So yeah. I really hope that you guys will employ the things that we talked about today and let us know guys, yes. like our page on Facebook, on, um, Instagram, on YouTube, hit the subscribe, hit the little bell so that you get notifications when we post new things. Leave comment, 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 and and, and, and I'm about to cut you off. Uh, I see, I hear you. I'm, <laughs> but I just want to say, above all of that, if you have any pressing questions, mm-hmm. it's something that you know you're struggling with or whatever. Send us a, a direct message. Yes, whatever you say. If you want it to remain confidential, it will remain confidential. Mm-hmm. Um, so, when we don't even have to talk about it on the podcast. Right, right we do right. offer coach, coach couples coaching. Mm-hmm. So, if, if there's something that you want to do, not you don't have to be struggling. If you right. want to just, just it's like a, we're ready for that next level. And upkeep and, you know, yeah. reach out to us. Yep. I'm sorry, I cut that's you off. What you was going to say. That's it. Okay. We're All here right. to help, guys. That's it. That's that's it. Okay. So this is Glenn and Tanya Coleman reminding you that your, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye.